Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. This is that 2007 120 Prada with 237,000 Ks. And we're gonna, we've got three stuck injectors. We've had a little fiddle around for a few minutes. Number one and two aren't moving. Three's a little bit loose. And number four stuck. So this is the next stage. Um, just gonna have a bit of a lever with a pry bar and see what happens to get an indication of. It's not moving at the moment. So what we're gonna do now is, uh, look, this is where we're gonna wish we had our special tool and it's not the puller. We don't need to hang the car off by the roof. We need to be able to twist the injector. And what would be ideal, I might have to, I think I've said this before, send this video to Kayon, to make up a tool that screws on the injector inlet over this side here. Um, and that is, a, if I remember correct, what's the wheel nuts? 12 by 1.5 or 1.7, something like that anyway. It's the same thread and we just need to get a tool that screws on there with a short handle, probably four inches long, so that it clears the EJR valve, so we can do it without hitting the EJR valve, and get some leverage to twist back and forward is what you need to do, while we've got some upward leverage going on. So everything as suspected so far in this with this engine, guys, you know, we picked it pretty quickly, what was going on, the smoke coming out the cap, the oil light question, yes, it did come on. The symptoms of what's going on, which we still believe is that number one cylinder is the worst of it. Um, but massive blow by and stuck injectors. Look at this mess. So, okay, I don't know. I think we're going to have to put the camera down for this. Um, we've shown in other videos how to get stuck injectors out. We're going to need to get into it for a bit. I'll try and give you some updates as we go. Okay, so we removed injector number three. That was the easy one. Number two, we've got it loose and we're lifting it up. And I just want to show you so you can get the picture. Do you get the picture? See around that injector there? My assistant, can you please grab that injector and twist and pull it if you can get around me there. Just so everyone can see the injector. See all the crap that's been blowing out the hole? The compression that's been... Let's just lift that out slowly. Look at that. I mean, it's not the first time. We've been doing this for years, but this is completely avoidable, right? All right, so we'll just pop that on the bench and we'll have a look at it later. Have a look at that. Okay, right. we've managed to get number one moving. And same thing, I just want to get in there and show you what it looks like. So if you can slowly twist and lift that out, thanks mate. Just gently, nice and slow. Just ridiculous, there's no need for this. And I note that they're the original copper seats, these injectors have never been out. Look at that, and see why they're stuck? That's the mess at the bottom where the seat's been leaking and the oil hasn't actually yet made it down. It's just an absolute disaster. 3 hands on the job. This is super tight, super stuck, and this is why you want to avoid it, guys. Easily avoidable. Massive problems if you don't. All right, so a little bit of persistence and some different ideas, and I just want to run through. So there's some people going, oh, shifters, I don't like, oh, butcher. Look, you know, it's about the only tool that a shifter is good for in the workshop is for twisting injectors, because as explained in other videos, you need upward pressure and twisting pressure to get these out. There is tools you can get that pull up, pullers and things that often don't work depending if you think, oh, I've got one and it's really good. Or maybe you haven't had an injector that's stuck well enough. And this certainly isn't one of those either, but it was stuck very well. And we've got someone here um, that we're going to keep top secret, you know, because he's already pretty busy at the moment. Some people probably know who I'm talking about. We're not going to name anyone. And he is an ideas man as well. And he, he went and rated my impact so uh, socket. They've got some dodgy ones there. And we worked out putting a 16 mil impact socket over the injector inlet. You can see that there. And there's a 24 mil over the 16 mil fit snug as well, using a half inch extension. It, look, you can't leave a back too far, but you can't with a shifter handle anyway. So I'll show you the procedure that's been going on for the last little while. If you can please give that a bit of a twist back and forward, mate, just to show people, right? A bit of twisting like that. Obviously, it wasn't able to happen. And that doesn't get it to come up. Then we need to bring the pry bar in carefully without damaging the camshaft. And one person twisting and one levering is what brings it up. And once you come up around about 10 to 20 mil, you usually clear and you can get it out. So we're going to get it out. We'll go and have a look at the, these on the bench and discuss a bit further what went wrong here. All right, guys. So th this is, you know, it's Friday afternoon here. Not much more is going to happen. I'm just going to go through. You can look at that. Look at that dirty, filthy EJR. I mean, just leaving the poor vehicle like that is just... I feel sorry for it. You know what I mean? Anyway, 
we're going to quickly go through this. We've been there. We've done it before. See, my problem is I forget, you know. I've been telling people about this for years, but before the videos, it was, you know, photos and it was words and it's hard to explain. And this is certainly the best way to do it. There's a whole heap of information I'm about to go through in the next five minutes and then we're done. Okay, obviously, clean your e-jars and there's solutions for that, but we're not talking about that. It just happens to be in the picture. We're talking about this blow by the situation that's absolutely killed this engine, okay? Hopefully, we can get away with some uh, not too extensive repairs to get it going back on the road, and that will demonstrate actually how tough the 1KDs really are, because they are just absolutely awesome, the crap they put up with. The fact that it's dealing with this crap here and this here, and it's still drivable down the road at the moment is just amazing, really. So what we got here, you can see copper, right? Now, what I need is, you know, the other two are still in the engine, you know, it's like I said, look at all this mess, guys. look at all this. This is the sort of stuff that will fall into the engine. It won't do any harm, but then when you do a compression test, it's not going to give you the right reading because that bit of dust under the valves is going to lower, give you no or low compression, right? There's the copper, right? Don't worry the fact they're copper. There's a bit of a misunderstanding with people, uh, you know, not, not knowing that all the right seats are copper, you know, and there's a problem with some people making them out of brass. But that's another story, another video. So what's happened here is these are the original injectors, okay? They've never been out. There's no evidence they've ever been out. And if they had, these would be changed because in production, here's a statistic for you. The last month these were used in Japan in Prados was the 12th month, 2007. By the first month, 2008, they came out with a coating over the top of them. Yeah. We're just going to do this again quickly. It's not going to take long. I'm going to show you. We've got a couple here to just, we'll take a, we'll take a couple out of there and show you. So they've got a coating over the top, right? There's still copper in the middle. You can see the erosion in the, in the center there. You can still see it's copper. That doesn't solve the problem because it isn't a problem. This isn't a problem. The problem is these were designed to last 40,000 kilometers. Okay, that's one of the problems. The next problem is off the top. See the black stuff on the edge of the seat. It hasn't been cleaned properly. People putting these down on dirty seats. It needs to be clean. It needs to be the right parts, the right workmanship, including the right torque settings with the right torque wrench. This is a precision job. Okay, so nothing wrong with any of this except the fact that it hasn't been changed. It's like driving on tyres for 200,000 Ks and when they pop, long after the steel belts are hanging out, and you wonder why did that happen? Well, <laughs> they wear out, you've got to change them. The difference is you don't know about this. I'm really the only one, there's not many other people, there's, I, don't, I don't see anything around online on any other makes or models, or including Toyotas, people doing what I'm doing with videos, posts, and all the information that's available. I'm trying to help you, so please try and understand. We're gonna go through what's happening with these injectors. This is the cleanest one. So we use this one as an example. This area here is an oil gallery. So the oil flows through here to heat and cool the injector, a bit like the coolant of the, you know, the, the cooling system having a thermostat, the transmission running through the radiator to get it up to temperature and then to keep it to temperature, right? So oil gallery here, okay? Here is an O-ring, okay? There's an O-ring there. So the oil should only be in that area there. Now, as we go down the injector, you saw where the seat was. The seat. This is where this injector base, this is what we call the cap nut. Uh, that's where, this is the seal between the cap nut and the alloy head. The head's alloy, this is steel. This is copper, they all heat and cool at different rates. Therefore you get a certain amount of movement between them. That's why I think the lower kilometer, the shorter trip vehicles, those seats aren't gonna last as long. So if the vehicle's old, oh but it's only done 90,000 Ks, that's where you're gonna have a problem. That's where if, oh, but I've done 260,000 Ks, I haven't had a problem. Well, you might have done it in five years. So you're doing longer highway running, it's up to temperature. Like anything, longer running works better. So what happens is these slowly erode away in the middle and deteriorate, and then eventually they start leaking. Obviously, a slow leak becomes a, a bigger leak, right? So early days, you might notice it idling a bit rough because of the compression difference especially when the engine's cold once it warms up that gap may close so particularly when it's cold if you've got a bit of a bump there it could be that but don't wait for it don't wait for symptoms don't wait for it to idle rough don't wait for it to blow smoke on startup do it as prevention it's not worth it in this case it's an engine okay um, so what happens once they leak the compression blows up the injector body here 
and then what it does it takes out this o-ring because this o-ring can't withstand those sorts of temperatures it goes hard it turns instead of being rubber it sort of turns into plastic you know and you know just plastic seal um where's that pick i was just going to grab it out of the drawer but nothing's ever where you want it to be the little purple handle pick here we go somewhere it's just going to have it you know i'm just playing around here just having a bit of a trying to show i don't want to touch and get my hands dirty really but if that's an o-ring still <laughs> if that's an o-ring still it's almost rubber but that's a, i'm going to pull on it and make it break maybe i don't know so that's still rubber but it's not very good okay it's not it's not very good rubber anymore so let's leave it alone we're just having a play around so what happens the point is you can see it's an o-ring there the heat eventually kills the o-ring and that's you know let's go to this one look look at that there's no o-ring there guys it's gone where do you reckon it went let's flip it over the other way any o-ring at that side no that o-ring she's gone bye bye sally right what do you reckon there's an o-ring left in there or there <laughs> it won't be an o-ring there ever we're not going there so that's what happens it cooks the o-ring this is the only one that's got one left these three gone those two are long gone this one's gone these were leaking ages ago if you watch the video we put out recently 149,000 k it's called dave's vehicle inspection or something then dave's diagnostic or david's diagnostic check that out because that's a perfect example of we got that early stage it was only a tiny bit of leaking at the seats they were only a little bit stuck in comparison these have been a bit of a pain to get out not too bad and you know we've had worse the brass washers that's another story okay so the scenario is basically once that oil that that o-ring's gone the oil leaks down and that's what's happening here it comes down to the bottom that compression cooks the oil and carbonizes it into little pieces like this and as you can see you've got a lot of different examples here you've got normal um, you've got obviously o-ring gone and you've got been like that a while this all gets pushed back up into the oil gallery back up into this area which is pumping oils pumping around flowing around here so it takes all those little particles back to your sump and at your sump is where your oil pickup is and again i've said it in uh, other videos the light comes on and people start to understand the oil pickup is trying to pick up oil but it's getting all these bits of particles and stuff like that into the gauze which blocks it up and then it can't pick up the oil and believe it or not when the oil light comes on with these engines that's when it's too late okay perhaps they should come on sooner for, for example you know when the oil pressure drops 20 percent below normal maybe they should come on then instead of when the oil pressure drops down to uh, it's got three percent left of 100 percent being ideal which seems to be the case because once the oil light comes on it seems to be there's virtually no oil pressure and it's too late the damage is done so you really want to understand this um, I hope this series of videos has helped people understand and know how important important it is to avoid these sorts of issues if you do want to contact me to purchase an injector kit Mondays are the day please don't bother me on Friday we're busy doing stuff like this it's meant to be a day off but there's always more work to do Please don't bother me on Thursday even. Monday's the day, Monday, Melbourne time from 8 a.m. if you'd like information on an injector kit. I'm thirsty, you know, like, it's that time of the day, you know. I'm gonna need more of those, you know. Anyway, you get the picture, guys. There'll be more videos on this vehicle. We're gonna help you as much as we can and share the information. And, um, you know, we're gonna consume some beverages now. So we're out of here, done for the day. That's a butter bing, butter boom. I haven't butter bing, butter boom for a while. And uh, look, if you haven't already, please give us a thumbs up. Hopefully you're learning something. And yeah, turn the, uh, I'm starting bell to figure on. what I'm gonna turn the <clears throat> bell on, turn the, subscribe, turn the bell on. But you're just gonna miss out if you don't. And share the videos to people so they can learn and understand. It's not just about, the, these are the best engines. Look at the crap they put up with. There's other engines that if you gave this to them, they just wouldn't handle it and you know what just think if you've got another brand if you think you're immune to this you're dreaming all right guys out of here see ya